Hi, I'm Dave Persina from 95X, your host for another edition of In Performance. Tonight we're here at the Landmark Theater, home of the Sammies, and we've got Here Comes Another Christmas. It's a Syracuse Music Holiday Benefit concert based on an album of the same name on the Blue Wave label. Before we head into any music, let's find out some of the background on the album and the concert that we're going to see tonight. How we ended up here tonight doing this Christmas show, we have to go back to starting the Christmas recording project, which was uh, 1989. We started in December of 1989. Um, Christmas project is something I've always wanted to do, but uh, I guess I probably wouldn't have done it unless Ron DeRolo seemed to be very receptive to the idea. So. Uh, the idea was to get as many of the talent around here to come up with some original Christmas songs, if not original Christmas songs, some songs that they could interpret in their own way, but uh, not to make a traditional Christmas record, to make something a little different, because pretty much every city has, you know, Christmas records come out into the same songs over and over, so uh, this project, uh, we wanted to do something different. So. Anyways, we started in 1989. The biggest problem was the fact that if you, we didn't do it around Christmas time, we just didn't feel like doing the project. So we did, I think, four songs the first session in December of 89, put things on hold quite a bit through, through time, and finally we realized we are going to finish this thing. We've got to work on it in June, July, when it's hot out, when it's Christmas is the furthest thing from your mind. Uh, so uh, finally, in May of 93, we finished up, got it out. I thought a good idea was to be tie into some charities and put on a nice Christmas show. The Landmark is the best place in the world for it, uh, one of the greatest theaters in the country. And to see the talent around here actually be able to play on a nice stage is uh, that satisfaction enough for me, you know, because they're. They got to play dives all the time, and they can actually play the landmark. I mean, what a great theater! Well, Greg asked me to, and I, uh, you know, I, I did play on the record, played on a couple of cuts, and um, also I just moved back here, and uh, after being away for four or five years, and it seemed a really easy way to reintegrate myself back into the music community and just get to meet everybody that's out playing and. It's Christmas, and I was feeling generous at the time, and I should have had my head examined, but here we are. I can't wait. I mean, Christmas is my favorite time of year, and I think the Syracuse music scene is incredibly vital right now. I mean, I think there are waves, you know? I mean, you have your up and down periods in terms of the music. I think right now the Syracuse music scene is, is more alive and healthier than it's ever been in a lot of years. So um, I'm really looking forward to it and anticipating it. I think it's going to be a fabulous concert. I think that the CD that Greg Spencer produced at Blue Wave, Here Comes Another CNY Christmas or whatever it is, is really outstanding. I mean, I think it's a great mix of originals and Christmas standards, and they're all performed in a real unique original flavor that has a lot of creativity in it, and I think it's sensational. So I think that to take that concept and put it live on our stage at the Landmark is really extraordinary. It seems like every time we do something involving resident artists from central New York, like the Brian Burke ben benefit after, you know, Brian Burke passed away, and the Sammy Awards last spring, uh, and now this, there seems to be a lot of magic, you know, it always seems to be a great combination. So I'm really glad that they're doing it at the Landmark, and I'm really glad that it's happening. Now, I want to welcome all of you to the Landmark Theater, and on behalf of everybody here at the theater, a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. We hope you find everything you're looking for under your tree this Christmas. And on behalf of the marvelous producer of this wonderful Christmas extravaganza tonight, Mr. Greg Spencer of, yeah, of Blue Wave Records, who produced this marvelous CD called Here Comes Another Christmas, um, we want to welcome you and thank you for your generosity on behalf of the food bank. Central New York Food Bank and Just for Babies. So without further ado, I want to give you the host and the MC for tonight's festivities from Soundcheck 95X, Mr. Dave Frizina. Hi there, how you doing? Well, here comes another Christmas on stage tonight, and for those of you that may have noticed, it's going to be on Syracuse New Channels as well. You can catch it uh, tomorrow night and over the course of the weekend, so you can relive the experience a couple more times. 
We've got a lot of uh, very talented musicians here tonight. You'll find that out for yourself. We've got a great house band. And first up, a friend of mine that I've known for a while, you may recognize from his days with the Flash Cubes and Screen Test. He's got a, a great solo album that came out not too long ago called Armory Square. Please welcome Gary Frenet. to do uh, another Christmas song that I wrote. It's for those of uh, those loved ones who can't be with you for one reason or another this Christmas, and it's called Christmas Without You. i 
presence would just make me miss you more and I know that's not what Christmas Day is for every song I hear I will remember every time I heard that song with you when my Cause it might be Christmas for someone who's in another place that I can't think about turning on the lights if you're song I hear, I will remember. Every time I heard that song with you, when my calendar turns to December, Cause it won't be Christmas without you No, it just won't feel the same If I can't see your smiling face on Christmas Eve All right, next up, a gentleman that most of us are very familiar with. His history in Syracuse goes back a ways. He's got a great collection disc on Blue Wave called Buried Bones, and his partner tonight is in a band called The Christophers. Please welcome Joe Whiting and Lauren Barriger. <laughs> The great thing about Christmas is it encompasses so many different emotions, I think, for everybody. And the poinsettias are a particularly nice touch, too. Anyway, this is a song about kind of one of the other sides, too. December's halfway gone And the snow is falling down Christmas time is coming in but the blues keep hanging around Well, since you're not here with me Christmas ain't like it used to be Now the tree's out on the porch But I haven't got the heart to bring it in But I don't know where to begin Well, since you're not here with me Christmas ain't like it used to be oh, Last year we were together 
As most of you might be aware, a lot of the music we're going to hear tonight appears on a new CD on Blue Wave called Here Comes Another Christmas. And uh, this is one of those tunes right now featuring a couple of people. One, one guy here, Ronnie D, uh, I've known for a while. He's got his studio, Lakewood Studios. And uh, these guys are one of the uh, sponsors of the show tonight, which is especially nice to have him here. He's a great guitar player, and we've got another musician that you're going to hear a lot more from real soon. She's got an album that's uh, in progress that's going to be coming out on Blue Wave. Please welcome Ronnie D and Kim Limbo.
Well, as you can tell so far, we got some killer blues players in Syracuse, and every year, we, well, actually the last couple of years, we've had something called the, uh, the Blues Festival downtown, and our next act is the main man responsible for that, getting ready for a very big third year, and I hope you all take, uh, take time to make some plans to join us downtown this year for the Blues Festival. Please welcome Austin Jimmy Murphy. <laughs>
All right. You may have heard music runs in the family. Well, these guys pretty much epitomize that. Just the tip of the iceberg of this family, actually. We've been able to see these guys in different bands, together on their own, in different combinations. It's great to have the three of them here tonight. I believe, uh, in fact, the latest recording we have uh, soon will be the guy in the middle. Jamie's got something coming out in the spring. Please welcome Jamie, John, and Tony. Please welcome the Notre Thomas Brothers.
Hey, how about we give a round of applause to uh, Mark Doyle and the house band so far. They've been keeping everybody company, huh? We'll bring them back in just a minute. Before we go any further, though, we'd like to thank a couple of the sponsors of the tonight's program because it came together kind of quick. And uh, Greg Spencer really went to town trying to get some folks to get the backing to put this on. We'd like to thank Gordon Brothers for helping out. The Dinosaur Barbecue, just down the street from here. Mainly Disc. Lakewood Music Group, AmeriCar Rental System, and of course, New Channels Cable Television, 13. And you can watch this show again tomorrow night and over the course of the holiday weekend as well. So pass the word along and look for it on TV. I've been watching the monitors in the back. It looks like it's going to be a great show. You guys just about set? I think they're set. You know, I have to compete on Sunday nights a little bit. Uh, there's not a whole lot of local music shows in town, but there is another real good radio show in town, and Tom Townsley has it on WAER. It's a blues show. Please welcome Tom Townsley and the Backsliders. Hey, how y'all feeling out there, all right? All right, well, as the representative, uh, one of the representative blues groups here, we have to cast a kind of jaundiced eye on these holiday activities, and the reason is Santa's been messing with the kid.
We're here to help you all with your New Year's resolutions right now. This is called the Resolution Blues. Gambling and I swear that I'll stop drinking. I won't stay out all night and I won't come home stinking. And if some fancy woman tries to turn my head around, I'll tuck in my tail feathers, catch the first bus out of town. I make these resolutions. Believe me when I say, oh, this time I'm gonna keep on. Well, at least. Smoking and I swear that I'll stop swearing. I'll stop checking out the short, short dresses girls keep wearing. I swear that I'll stop clowning and I'll pay my bills on time. I'll keep every promise, baby, or at least I'll go down try. I make these resolutions. Believe me when I say, well, this time I'm gonna keep on. Well, at least through New Year's Day. Statistics show that 46% of all kids who smoke marijuana are inner-city youth. Guess who the other 54% are? Call for a free parent's guide to drug prevention. 1-800-624-0100. 
I don't know. I'm missing something there. Not every cultural activity appeals to everyone. It's so powerful. I don't see it. That's why 23,000 Arts and Humanities groups invite you to find something you will get excited about. Just call for a free brochure. I think I'm getting into this. They're tuning up. The Arts and Humanities. There is something in it for you. There's a lot going on in your community. For a free brochure on how to get involved, call our toll-free number. And uh, thanks again for coming out. The, I mean, the local music scene is only as good as the people that support it, so I appreciate you guys coming out tonight. You're making the uh, action speak louder than words, and all of us appreciate, all of these guys appreciate it a lot as well. To continue the program right now, this guy, you may have seen him as a king snake. You can now find him in Terry and the Hound Dogs. Please welcome Terry Mulhauser.
properly introduced right there. Joining uh, Terry was Penny Jo Pullis, ladies and gentlemen. And right now, joining Penny Jo Pullis is Joel McKay, and together as they appear on the Here Comes Another Christmas album, please welcome the Mud Puppies.
Uh, just about a week ago, ooh, just about a week ago, Soundcheck celebrated 14 years on the air. I just checked my calendar. I didn't realize it. Somebody reminded me. We didn't do anything special for it. But uh, when we first started, or when I first started the show, it was a stretch to come up with 10 or 12 bands every week with something different. And now I must get that many tapes every couple of weeks. And uh, the music scene in Syracuse has exploded. You can find it out in the stores around and uh, with demo cassettes and with CDs that are constantly being released. And uh, we're looking forward to another great Sammy's award ceremony here at the Landmark in the spring. And I hope you all can make it down for that as well. These guys have a tape, their last one out, called Gypsy Confidant that gets a lot of airplay on soundcheck and rightfully slow, rightfully so rather. Please welcome the Z-Bones. Position. Uh, feel free to sing right along with us and waltz if you will. It's Come. called Here Comes Another Christmas.
Coming up to wind up the show, I just want to remind you, just a warning right now that we're going to have a, uh, an all-star sing-along with a song that all you guys know. So if you want to sing along or we'd like you to join us. All of you, coming up in just a few minutes. Right now, we've got a band that's got an album out. And in fact, not only is, is this guy sitting in here uh, a great headliner, but he's also a super substitute whenever you need one. He'll, he'll, he'll show up. Joe, I need somebody. Just, we need somebody out there. So as soon as these guys are all revved up and ready to rock, and I think they just about are, please welcome the Built for Comfort Blues Band.
can find some combination of the folks that you're hearing tonight in, in town, either on their own or in their own bands or doing something. Any night of the week there's people playing in Syracuse and it's just uh, up to you to check the new times, listen to the radio and find out who, what and where and, and go see them for yourself. Check out a whole set sometime and you'll probably be glad you did. Right now we're going to turn things over to the, uh, the band leader for tonight. And now you'll see why people uh, respect and admire his guitar playing. Please give a warm welcome for Mark Doyle. <laughs>
All right, just a reminder once again, uh, thanks for coming out. And tonight, Here Comes Another Christmas is uh, going to be on TV as a special presentation of In Performance on Syracuse New Channels. So look for it uh, tomorrow and over the course of the holiday weekend. And check it out on Cable 13. And right now, on behalf of the Food Bank and Just for Babies, we'd like to thank all of you for donating to those organizations tonight. I'd like to thank Frank Malfitano and the Landmark Theater for always being just the best place anywhere to hear music. And Frank, for all his support of the local music scene, he's a real activist, and we couldn't do it without him. For all the folks at New Channels, for Greg Spencer at Blue Wave for putting the whole thing together, and, and that label alone is responsible for some great music in town, and all the musicians and technicians that took part in tonight's uh, performance. We'd like to wind up with a couple of traditional tunes. The vocalist out there right now, standing under the spotlight, waiting for me to shut up, is the lead singer of a band called Taboo. They have a Christmas cassette out right now. Please welcome Kim Fetters. Christmas, everybody.
I'm Whiting. He's Doyle. And I'm Mark Ballard, and you can watch Acoustic Cafe every Friday at 10.30 on Cable 13. Don't miss it in December. These two guys. Stand up and don't give in. Never say that you can't win. Stand up, don't let it by. You got to try to make it better. Because that road goes on forever. Looking to make a move in today's real estate market, but you don't know which way to turn? Tune into Open House, a brand new series on Cable 13, designed to help you, the consumer, make informative decisions in the real estate market. Sponsored by Coldwell Banker, First Properties, where you can expect the best. Don't be confused on your next move. Watch Open House live every Wednesday at 8 p.m. on your neighborhood network, Cable 13. Education, the environment, estate planning, health care, taxes. Those are just some of the issues we look at from the legal point of view on the McKenzie Law Review. I'm Rochelle Casella. Join me every third Thursday of the month for the McKenzie Law Review on your neighborhood network, Cable 13. You know, not too many years ago, when you walked through the neighborhood, you could tell who was heating with wood because you could see smoke coming out of the chimney. That's not true anymore. Things have certainly changed a lot since I started heating with wood. Like most people, I started with a fireplace. It was great in the evening for atmosphere, but overnight the fire would burn down and all the heat from inside the house would go up the chimney. Even when they're burning, a fireplace only puts 10 to 15 percent of the heat into your home. Then in the 1970s and 80s, I used a wood-burning stove. Like most of those old stoves, it was very inefficient, and the smoke it emitted caused environmental problems. With guidelines from the Environmental Protection Agency, the stove designers went to work and came up with an entirely new breed of wood-burning stove. They're safer, they're more efficient, and they're friendly to the environment. So I traded in my old smoker for one of the new EPA-certified wood stoves. With the new stove, I burn a third less firewood because it's much more efficient. One thing's always been true about heating with wood. You're recycling the energy of the sun, not using up a limited resource like coal, gas, or oil, the fossil fuels. You see, when fossil fuels are taken out of the earth and burned, they produce an overload of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. That's the source of many of our major environmental problems. Once burned, the fossil fuels are gone forever. Wood is different. As all plants grow, they absorb carbon dioxide from the air and convert it to fiber. The carbon dioxide is released after they die, whether they are burned or simply left to rot in the forest. New England poet Robert Frost called it the slow, smokeless burning of decay. It is part of nature's cycle. And wood is a competitively priced and abundant source of heat. In the eastern United States, after all wood is harvested for current uses, we still have a net annual growth of about 60 million cords of hardwoods and 36 million cords of softwoods. And the new breed of efficient EPA-certified wood stoves make the most of our resources, a big improvement over the old days. Let's go down to the local stove store, and I'll show you what I mean. I remember a time after the oil embargo of the 1970s when people were so desperate they were making wood stoves out of converted 55-gallon oil drops. Today's new stoves are more like beautiful pieces of furniture, and their efficiency ratings are as high as nearly 70%. By law, all new wood stoves sold since 1990 must meet stringent Environmental Protection Agency standards for particle emissions. You can be sure by looking for this tag. You'll find one with the wood stove you're looking at, and it tells you a couple of things. First, that your stove has been certified by the EPA. There's a permanent plaque on the back of the stove as well. Second, it gives you the heat output of the stove in BTUs. With this information and the square footage of the area you want to heat, your wood stove dealer can help you choose the right size stove to heat your home. You also must consider how well insulated your home is. 
and the amount of window area you have. Why do these new stoves burn cleaner and more efficiently? Well, one type uses a catalytic combustor. The other recirculates the smoke to reburn it. This is good for two reasons. First, they help keep the environment clean by burning up smoke and carbon monoxide. Recent tests show these new stoves burn 60 to 70 percent cleaner than the older ones. And second, when you operate your stove properly, they significantly reduce the amount of creosote that builds up in your chimney. Creosote is this residue of tarry gunk left when stoves are burned inefficiently, particularly when they're damped down. If it gets hot enough, it'll catch fire, and that's the cause of chimney fires. Burned properly, your new stove should significantly reduce your worries about chimney fires. These stoves can be built from plate steel or cast iron. There's no preference for one over the other. Cast iron stoves have corners sealed with gaskets and cement and may require more long-term maintenance. But many people enjoy their classic designs. How do these new stoves work? Let's take a look first at the catalytic combustor. This is a catalytic combustor. It fits inside the stove in the path of the smoke. It's a honeycomb of ceramic material coated by the precious metals platinum and palladium. Smoke passes through the honeycomb. When this combustor heats up to 500 degrees, it more completely burns the small organic particles that make up smoke. These new stoves are designed to make the catalytic combustor accessible for inspection and replacement. Here are some things to look for when you're shopping for a catalytic combustor stove. Let's take a look inside. Materials in construction can have a big impact on how clean and efficiently your wood stove will burn over the long run. Smoke is directed around the catalytic combustor until after the stove gets hot. Then you move a lever that moves a bypass plate. The smoke then goes through the catalytic combustor. Find the bypass plate. It should be made of cast iron or plate steel at least 5 16 of an inch thick. You want a good tight fit. Test the bypass plate by closing it on a dollar bill. Plate should grip the dollar bill and not allow it to slip out easily. Even more important is the area the plate closes over because intense heat can warp it. It should be made of cast iron with additional shapes molded in for strength or at least 5 16 inch steel plate with extra angle iron or rib support. One of the most important things to look for is either a flame shield or a serpentine chamber. This is either a metal plate with holes in it or a winding path that protects the catalytic combustor from the flame. The other type of EPA approved stove does not use a catalytic combustor. It recirculates smoke through the interior of the stove and reburns it. These are sometimes called non-cats. They're designed to mix preheated air from the outside with the smoke from the inside to more completely burn the soot and the gases. Buying tips for a non-cat? Well, the main body should be at least one quarter inch sheet steel or cast iron. Inside, the most critical area is the baffle or roof of the main fire chamber. To resist warping, it should be at least 5 16 inch plate steel or heavier and have V-shaped support beams. Shop around. Ask your dealer about the features I've just mentioned. And finally, ask your local chimney sweep for an opinion. Over the long run, they see practically every kind of problem. They can be a great source of information, especially if they're not selling stoves themselves. Once you've chosen your stove, have a professional install it. The safety history on do-it-yourself installations is not very good. With wood as our most abundant renewable fuel, these new stoves are the wave of the future. Now it's up to us to operate them in a manner that gets the most out of what they have to offer. It all begins with the wood you burn. Let's take a look. Firewood is firewood, right? Well, not by a long shot. Not all firewood is created equal. For example, one quart of dry hickory contains the same number of heating units as 177 gallons of oil. But one quart of dry white pine or hemlock only contains the number of heating units as 107 gallons of oil. That's a difference of 70 gallons of oil per cord. By the way, a cord of wood is a stack eight feet long by four feet high and four feet deep, about 120 cubic feet. If you want to be sure you're getting your full measure when you buy firewood, why not set up your storage area in one cord increments so you can tell how much you got after it's stacked? 
Don't be confused by something called a face cord. This is four feet high and eight feet long, but only one log, not four feet deep. Unlike the old days of wood burning, many states now have laws that control how wood is sold. Firewood must be dry to burn efficiently. Wet wood burns slowly. How do I tell if wood is dry? The first thing I do is look at the ends. Wood that's still green and wet will be smooth across the cut. But as it dries, it will develop cracks radiating out from the center. Weight is also a clue, but it takes a little practice to tell. Normally, a quart of wood will lose about 1,000 pounds of moisture as it dries in the air. For example, a green quart of hickory will weigh about 5,700 pounds, but dry, it only weighs about 4,600 pounds. In fact, a quart of wood will shrink two to four inches as it dries. Sometimes wood is sold by weight, don't pay for a thousand pounds of moisture that's just going to evaporate. I buy firewood late in spring. I know it will dry in the six months that elapse before I burn it, and sometimes I can negotiate a better price because it's a slow time for suppliers. How much wood will you need? Well, one gallon of number two fuel oil is roughly the equivalent of 22.2 pounds of wood. An average dry cord of wood weighs about 3,500 pounds. So for every 100 gallons of fuel oil, you'll need about 2,200 pounds of wood to heat completely with wood. Divide by 3,500 pounds per cord, you'll need a little more than half a cord for every 100 gallons of oil. Once you've calculated how much wood you'll need, it's easy to calculate exactly how wood compares to oil in cost. Remember, however, the harder the wood, the more heat value per cord. Normally, your supplier will bring you a mixture. Ask him what's in it. Here's how some types of firewood compare with gallons of fuel oil. Hardwood like hickory, white oak, and sugar maple are at the top of the efficiency list, while softwood like aspen or poplar are at the bottom. Burning the right wood is important to get the most out of your wood stove. So is proper operation. Let's go inside and take a look. My new stove has a catalytic combustor, so operating it is a little different from operating the old one. Let's build a fire and I'll show you what I mean. I start with a fairly clean firebox, just a thin layer of ashes on the bottom. Then open up all dampers and air controls to make sure the fire gets plenty of oxygen. This lever on the back controls whether the smoke goes through or around the catalytic combustor. I'm setting it now to bypass the combustor. Basically, we're starting with the catalytic combustor out of the path of the smoke until it gets hot enough to do its work. That's 500 to 600 degrees. Then we'll engage the combustor. It will become an afterburner that ignites particles and gases that have not yet been burned. Why does it have to be engaged after the stove heats up? Well, when smoke particles pass through a cool catalytic combustor, they tend to stick to it and gum it up. That can cause hot spots and damage like this. The important thing to remember is to follow the directions with your stove. Stove should have a temperature probe or a thermometer that confirms your catalytic combustor is operating in a range of 600 to 1200 degrees. Your thermometer will read about half that because there is a 40 to 50 percent difference between the temperature at the thermometer and at the center of the flue. Well, let's get our fire started. I begin with four or five sheets of newspaper, but instead of crumpling them up, I roll them into a loose cylinder, just like this, and then tie a loose knot. Four or five of these have been a surefire method for me. The best kindling, of course, is dry softwood. If you have trouble finding enough, ask your wood supplier to throw in some softwood for kindling. After the first kindling has ignited, add more to make a good bed. Now add some real firewood. If I have dry softwood available, I would add some now, mixed in with the hardwood, no more than three or four pieces altogether. The best firewood to add now is something split rather than a round log, something about four inches across. By now, logs should start burning as soon as you put them in. Whenever you reload, it's a good idea to throw a small piece or two in under the larger pieces. 
In a few minutes, you'll be able to tell that your stove is operating properly. You'll feel the heat and you'll hear the air rushing in. When the temperature reaches 500 to 600 degrees, 250 to 300 on your thermometer, you're ready to put the catalytic combustor to work. Follow the instructions for your stove. On mine, I simply move that lever at the back and the internal bypass damper directs the smoke onto a path through the catalytic combustor to torch particles and gases that would have gone up the chimney. If you watch the changeover to the catalytic combustor from outside, you would see smoke coming out one moment and a few seconds later, you would see no smoke. In fact, it's a very good idea to check your chimney before and after you engage the combustor just to make sure your stove is working properly. Your combustor should last for two or three years when it needs to be replaced, you'll begin to see three telltale signs. A loss of heat at the thermometer or catalyst temperature probe. Dark smoke, blue or brown, coming from your chimney. You'll start to smell wood smoke. You might also find an unusual buildup of creosote in the chimney near the stove. How you burn your stove can both increase efficiency and prolong the life of your catalytic combustor by two to four times. The best way is to burn at a low to medium burn range, but hot enough to keep the catalytic combustor active. Stay within the safe operating range marked on your thermometer. To preserve your combustor, don't burn painted or chemically treated wood, trash or garbage, saltwater driftwood, aluminum, plastics, and colored paper. Experiment for a few days to find out what draft settings work best for you. The size of the load and the amount of damping down should be adjusted to meet your heat requirements and then left alone. Simply add wood when the fire burns down to meet your heating requirements. If you have a non-CAD stove, it may have a smaller firebox and you will reload more frequently. Don't overload your stove or try to quickly heat up a cold house. Set the house thermostat to fill in when the wood stove burns down or between fires. In warmer weather, when you just want to take the chill off, use smaller fires and smaller logs. With these new stoves, there should be less maintenance and worry. When properly operated and with catalytic combustors in good shape, they reduce the buildup of creosote. That means you reduce the risk of chimney fire and the frequency of chimney cleanings. That saves money. Twice a season, I check on the catalytic combustor and simply brush off any ashes or other material with a paintbrush. You can vacuum it with a brush attachment if you prefer. Although your creosote problems are greatly reduced, get acquainted with your local chimney sweep. Set up a regular schedule of inspection and cleaning. Have him check the stove itself for any damage or deterioration to the gaskets or the housing. One particular area of concern is the catalytic bypass gasket. Have him check the catalytic combustor itself for any signs of damage or deterioration. You'll sleep better knowing your heating system is in good condition. Finally, when you burn hardwood, you will produce an excellent fertilizer and soil builder, wood ash. Wood ash is about 1 to 2 percent phosphate and 4 to 10 percent potash, two of the major ingredients in fertilizers. It also has the same soil building effect as adding lime to raise the pH of your soil. In the spring or fall, I spread about 2 pounds of ash per 100 square feet of lawn or garden. Be sure when you clean out your firebox that the ashes go into a metal container, not a paper or plastic bag. Don't risk starting a fire. Those embers can be alive in the ash for days. There's nothing like a wood fire on a chilly day. I've heated with wood on and off for about 30 years, and I've never felt better about it than I do now. I've calculated that I use 25% less wood with this new stove compared to the old one. That's because they burn 20 to 30% more efficiently. On top of that, I don't have to have the chimney clean nearly as often. Now, these new stoves are just as efficient as any other heating equipment, and replacing my old smoker means I'm doing something to clean up the environment. The EPA reports these new technologies produce stoves that operate 60 to 70 percent cleaner than the stoves made just a few years ago. When I look back, well, heating with wood is better than ever. And I know you like it, too.
Magazine 13, the video journal about the people, places, and issues of Central New York. Hi everybody, welcome to Magazine 13 and happy, happy holidays. I'm Nancy Roberts. And I'm Ron Curtis Jr. And I'm Jack Moore, Season's Greetings. That's right. This is our, our right. holiday gift to you. <laughs> yes. That's right, and a special one it is. We've got a very yeah. special show coming up for you. That's right. Uh, this week on Magazine 13, we'll take a look back at some of our favorite stories so far this season, including the Walk of Stars, Chadwick Residence, and Homeschooling. Nancy, you'll get a taste of a holiday carnival. That's right, in case you're the kind of person who just isn't content unless you're getting to go on rides and play carnival games and <laughs> all of that. Well, believe it or not, this time of year there's something for you. And Jack, what is up in sports tonight? Well, Nancy, we've turned the calendar officially. It is winter by the calendar, so let's talk golf. <laughs> golf! Yes, let's talk golf. There's a lot of good golf around here. We want to talk uh, with a man who is in charge of a whole lot of it in terms of who runs the courses and the pros and all that good stuff. And Joan Scheidecker's here. That's right, Joan. What you cooking today? Well, we're not cooking anything. We're going to talk about all those goodies that you get in those holiday baskets. Ooh. Uh-oh, which ones I shouldn't eat? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and how long each thing lasts. And You talk about golf. I, I, I was Nothing saying on the last show, I yeah. golfed on December 9th. I'm so proud of that. That was the latest I've ever golfed. Amazing. Quite statistics, something. statistics. It, Stay though? tuned with us. <laughs> Each fall, Syracuse looks forward to a night when Salina Street takes on an aura of Hollywood Boulevard. The spotlights shine, the red carpet gets rolled out, and the limos filled with stars pull up to the Landmark Theater. Movie premiere? Nope. It's the Walk of Stars. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Dan Cummings from WYXT, Central New York 9. It's 5 p.m., and if this were a weekday, I'd be anchoring 9 News Now. But for the third year in a row, a Sunday in early autumn means only one thing for downtown Syracuse, the induction ceremony for the Syracuse Walk of Stars. Welcome to the 1993 induction ceremony. I'll be your host this afternoon. In a moment, three limousines will deliver our celebrated inductees right to the head of the red carpet. And tonight, their names will be added to this tribute walk, now in its third year. Ladies and gentlemen, the family of actor Gordon McRae, Meredith McRae, Sheila McRae, and Gar McRae. Ladies and gentlemen, comedian, television personality, and motion picture actor, Mr. Jerry Stiller. 